why don't you pray first and say, God, should I write Larry Lee? I believe if you'd have just enough courage to say that little prayer, I believe you'd be surprised at what the Lord would put on your heart. God bless you for your courage. God bless you today for joining me in prayer. The difference between success or failure in the spiritual realm over the course of the next 12 years will be referenced directly to the praying church. And for that, there is a massive attack right now by the devil against the church that will pray the price to see a real revival in our land. Now, I'm going to ask you before we pray today to be seated. I want to read something for you that was uh, quite uh, alarming on the one hand, but on the other hand, quite uh, revealing. I'm going to read an article from the Dallas paper that was written yesterday. I don't know if you've read this article or not. But this article, uh, for the first time in my knowledge, uh, a group of so-called scholars have gathered to contend whether or not the Lord's Prayer was actually the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this question is raised, I believe, in light of two things. Number one, that every one of these people who wrote this article are seminarians, are people who teach our young men and our young women how to preach and teach the gospel around our land. It's very frightening to me on the one hand. On the other hand, it is written in light of the fact that there is a massive wave of a prayer revival that's being established right now throughout our land. But also, it's based on the fact that God is raising up a praying people, praying after the pattern that Jesus prayed. I wanted to read this to you, and then I want to make a few uh, comments. Scholars contend Lord's Prayer is the work of Christians, not the work of Jesus himself. Do you mind if I read this to you? The Lord's Prayer was not composed by Jesus, but was the work of early Christians who wrote it after the crucifixion. A national group of biblical scholars have decided. After a lengthy and often emotional debate at an Atlanta hotel meeting uh, room that, this last week, members of the Jesus Seminar voted that the prayer contains no more than various ideas that were probably similar to Jesus, the ones Jesus had. Only the word Father was rendered as Abba in the Gospel of Luke can be directly traced to Jesus, the scholars decided. Stephen Patterson, a, professional, a professor of Eden Theological Seminary in St. Louis, said it's not likely that Jesus even wanted to compose a set prayer. Tusig, a professor of St. Joseph's University in Philadelphia, says the Lord's Prayer may contain paraphrased fragments of Jesus' words or Jesus that Jesus spoke. And then Tusig made this statement. I think he prayed, but I don't think he made a big deal out of prayer. And that was the final word of the article. Now, I have a few comments that I want to make today about that. First of all, Jesus made a big deal out of prayer. He spent his entire life going from one place of prayer to the next place of prayer, even to the place of the cross, and he's living right now. If Jesus made no big deal out of prayer, why does the Bible say he's living ever to make intercession for us right now? My God! That's comment number one. Comment number two. 
My 14-year-old son said to me this morning, as I shared with him the content of this article, he said, Daddy, if that's what they're teaching the preachers, then he said, what in the world are the people going to believe if that's what's being taught in our seminaries? Friend, that's what I was taught at the most conservative theological seminary in America. That line of higher criticism, which really is not higher criticism, it's lower skepticism. It is produced by people who were not born again, who did not have a born again experience, who never led anybody to Christ, who could not build churches, who never worked miracles. And now our young men and our young women are being taught to dissect the Bible, take the parts of it they like, and take out the parts they don't like. And I promise you one thing, what I'm being said right now is going to be heard all over America. It really will be. And there is at least one person in this audience today, and there are many hundreds of thousands that are listening by television right now, that are going to be saying, listen, you better watch out taking a stand like that. You're going to make people mad. You're going to make people not like you. You better listen to what I'm about to say right now. Every tree that my heavenly Father hath not planted will be plucked up. You better listen to another thing. Don't follow those blind guides. I'm going to say it again. These are blind guides who can't get in themselves, but everybody that follows them become twice the child of hell that they are. That's my second comment. Third comment is what the Holy Spirit's told me to do about it. I'm not going to wrestle with flesh and blood. I'm not going to go on national television and debate these guys. I spent nine years of my life in college and seminary, at least so that I would understand what they were saying. But what I'm going to do about it is do what the Spirit of God told me to do here this morning. And that is I'm going to bind a spirit of religion. We're going to come against a spirit of religion that literally blocks men from having a relationship with God. One man said uh, recently, he said, well, there's enough room uh, in the body of Christ for your liberals. And there's enough room in the body of Christ for your conservatives. He said, isn't there enough room for those who believe the Bible and those who don't believe the Bible? And I looked back and I said, that's too much room. God spoke in my heart and he said, today we're to stand on our feet and bind the spirit of religion. I want everybody that says, I don't want religion, but I want a pure relationship with Jesus to rule my life. Listen, I'm saying to you, they believe it up to the point that it doesn't get into their religion. Folks, I want us to, to say to God today. We love every person in this world. We love the Baptists, the Methodists, the Catholics. We love every human being on the face of the earth. Everybody in agreement with me? I mean, we love, I love those scholars. But boy, I don't love what's got them. Do you hear what I'm saying? I don't love what got on them, what got in them. I hate that with a holy hatred. Boy, there's a time to love. But there's also a time to what? That's what the Bible says. There's a time to love. There's a time to hate. And I'm not talking about hating men. Because the Bible says you're to love even your enemies. But boy, you don't love what possesses them. You don't love. It's, it's much like the surgeon going in. and He loves his patient. But he hates the cancer that's got the patient. So he doesn't kill the patient to get to the cancer, but he's after the cancer. How many of you understand what I just said? Boy, I love these people. With all my heart, I love them. But boy, I want to tell you something. I hate what's had them. 
How many of you were ever bound by religion? All right, just lift your hand. Just stand there for just.